basically what we're looking for is uh, something that we can take back and forth to the beach on the weekends. We can take out cruising on Saturday night and uh, maybe have a little fun with the horsepower, you know, within the law, of course. That's Ernest and Amy Smith who brought their 69 Olds Cutlass here for our Real Ride Challenge makeover. And our biggest challenge will be to give it more horsepower. With a weak 350 cubic inch engine, the best the Cutlass could muster was 150 horses on our dyno jet. Yeah, that's not much of a muscle car. All right, Ernie. And you know, with a lot of hustle and a little bit of luck, well, that's exactly what's going to happen to your old Cutlass here today in the shop. Hey, thanks for joining us. And man, what a busy day we've got planned today. In fact, after the engine swap, we're also going to replace the transmission with this high performance unit. Plus, we're going to give it a new rear end, front and rear suspension components, and a new exhaust. And finally, we're even going to upgrade the front and rear brakes. Now, to get a head start, Mike's already removed that tired old 350 and the stock tranny to make way for the 455. Well, since we're under the gun to get a lot of work done today, we first sent Joe to a place called Recon up in Philadelphia. I guess you might say he was on a little bit of a recon mission. Now, his goal was to find a good rebuildable 455 core, have it machined, built, dynoed, and delivered here today. Over the years, Recon has earned a reputation for producing some of the best remanufactured performance engines in the world. Part of the secret? The founder's philosophy that's endured since the beginning over 30 years ago. If you lack that passion to get the job done, you ain't never going to get it done and you ain't going to enjoy what you're doing. Of course, our rebuild all starts with a good core, and here in Recon's core yard, you'll find 15,000 on any given day. And fortunately for us, a 455 ready for new life. Every core is first baked at 750 degrees before it's shot blasted and then liquid magnafluxed to detect the tiniest crack. Once they pass inspection, they're ready to move on to the machining facility for the next phase. Here, the crankshaft is micro-polished and oil hose chamfered. Each is balanced to ensure there's no vibration and here at the Quality Assurance Station, the journals are checked for even the slightest peaks and valleys. Other procedures include using a carbide bit to cut the valve seats for a three-angle valve job, boring the cylinder walls to specs, and line honing the mains to make sure the crank spins freely. The list goes on and on before they're ready for assembly. Our 455 will be ready for assembly after Joe Giovi makes a final check of the clearances. He's the performance engine specialist who'll install the new components of our Extreme package. First to go in is our Extreme Energy Comp Cams camshaft. Then the rest of our bottom end, including the bearings, the new crankshaft, and mains. He uses lots of lube and ARP bolts and torques the mains to 85 foot-pounds. Now to align the thrust bearings. Sharp tap in reverse. And then sharp tap forward. Before locking it in place and torquing it down. After installing the new timing set, he's ready for a bit of filing on the new Molly ring. And you always want to file from the outside in to prevent chipping of the Molly face ring. The entire valve train is new comp cams, high performance pieces. After installing the head gaskets, a new set of Edelbrock aluminum performer RPM heads. And after dropping on the rocker arms and valley plate, Joe can install the Edelbrock performer manifold made for the 455. Well, this is it. We've got an Edelbrock 850 quadrajet to feed it and the uh, Petronics flamethrower to give it some spark. So this thing's warmed up and ready for some dyno numbers. Hit it, Joe. Mission accomplished, 400 horsepower at the crank. These guys really rock. 
Joe, you rock for getting this 455 back in time. Now we can go ahead and get it mated to the transmission and drop it into place. But first, the torque converter. It's a nine and a half incher from BTE, and it'll give us a stall speed of 28 to 3,500 RPM. And we're using one of their stronger Turbo 400 street strip transmissions to replace that original Turbo 350. It's been upgraded with six clutches and low gear, extra tall pump gears to increase line pressure, and a shift improver kit. That deep aluminum pan adds strength to the trans case and helps cool the fluid. Before we can bolt in this monster, we first need to cinch down our motor mounts, and then we're gonna bolt in these pulleys and brackets that we got from Mandela Performance Products. Yeah, now, I've already laid in those hooker headers, and well, I'm holding them in place with some bungee cords. All right, here we go. The 455 bolts right up to the 350 frame mounts, making this an easy swap. But the deck height is taller, so you'll need to find the correct 455 accessory brackets to make it all work. Okay, come down a couple inches on the picker. I'm in. Well, guys, that's a great fit. And while we finish bolting up this engine and trans, keep your seat. There's a whole lot real ride makeover left ahead. Well, our real ride challenge makeover is moving right along. We just finished dropping in a Recon 455 big block, a BTE transmission, and set of hooker headers. Well, now it's time to bolt on some of the accessories, like this 100 amp one wire alternator from Powermaster, one of their high torque starters, and a dry cell battery from Optima. That 455 is going to make a lot more heat than the 350, plus, we're going to use the factory AC. So we had B-Cool send us this drop-in replacement with one-inch oval tubing and these high-efficiency fins that can cool up to 700 horsepower. Now, on the back of this thing, we bolted up one of their modules with a pair of 11-inch spall fans that can move over 2,700 CFM. Oh, by the way, they're activated at 190 degrees by a thermal switch. While we're up here, here's something else we can bolt on. Now, since four-wheel disc brakes take more pedal pressure and fluid movement to operate, Master Power sent us their new 8-inch dual diaphragm booster and high-capacity master cylinder. Well, we had to put the brakes on our work for just a little while. With a project this ambitious, you can't expect everything to work out as planned. Well, like the pulleys that didn't quite line up. So we decided to have the stock ones sandblasted and powder coated, along with the brackets, at a place called Powder Tech in Nashville. After a lot of hard work and a little bit of improvising, we're finished under the hood. We ran all of our vacuum lines, water hoses, electrical connections, and belts. Yeah, this power plant's done. It's a far cry from that tired 350 we took out. An all-American muscle car needs some American thunder. So we ordered up this three-inch system from Flowmaster, and we're also going with a couple of their free-flowing 50 series mufflers. Now, even with a larger diameter, notice how these pipes tuck up nice and tight to the floor pan. Looks pretty good back here, too, but check this. Normally, this trumpet would pass through a cutout in the bumper, but it's only got a two-inch inlet, and with a three-inch tailpipe, well, I guess we gotta blow off the trumpet. Here's another original piece that needs to go. It's the fuel tank, and it's 35 years old and probably full of crud. So the last thing we want to do is starve the big 455 for fuel. Let's get this thing out of here and the new one bolted up from year one. Before installing the new tank, be sure to drop in a new pickup. Then add the anti-squeak strips. You know, I was just thinking, before we reinstall that gas tank, now would be a great time to get this rear end out of here. But in order for us to do that, we've first got to get the car off of this lift and onto our side lift. Now, the upside of it, though, is it'll give us great access to the rear end, the suspension, and the brakes. All right. I got these control arms out of the way. How Mine, you too. I guess we can come down now. Okay. Clear? Yeah. 
We're going to dump that weak factory rear end and replace it with this new 12 volt unit from Mosier Engineering. Now it features a 342 ring gear and an Eaton Posse. Oh, and check this out. They even powder coated it. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah, that is a pretty piece. But you know, before we can bolt it in the car, we first need to attach our Hotchkiss control arms. Now I want you to check this out. They're made from thick wall rectangular tubing and they feature these greasable urethane bushings here. Let me handle that mic. Oh, and here's something else that's pretty cool, too. The uppers are actually adjustable, so you can tune your suspension by changing your pinion angle. With the rear end supported on these control arms, we can now put our springs in. And as you see here, they seat right on this saddle on the rear end. With the springs in place, we can bolt up our Elbrock shocks. Finally, the sway bar can go up. We can also install this new aluminum drive shaft we had fabbed up at the driveline shop. We're going to replace the old drum brakes with a set of discs from Master Power, but first, we've got to get the axles in place. Now, Moser's eliminated the factory C clips and placed them with these Ford style bearings. Now, it's all held in place with this retainer plate. Next, we can bolt up the caliper bracket. Then slide the rotors over the axle studs. Then the caliper. Finally, this new brake line and our parking brake cable. Now we can finally get that new gas tank installed and get started on the new front suspension and brakes. Well, not so fast there, partner. We need to take a little bit of a break on our own. But we'll be back to finish up the Real Ride Challenge right after this. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Heads up. It's this week's Horsepower Marketplace. Watch High Performance Show right here on Spike TV, the first network for men. Hey, welcome back to our Real Ride Challenge makeover. Now, if you're just joining us, we started out with this 69 Olds Cutlass convertible that belongs to Ernest and Amy Smith. Now, he was earnest about wanting some more power, so we gave it to him. Starting with a 455 from Recon and a Turbo 400 from BTE, a set of hooker headers, a Flowmaster 3-inch exhaust, and a Moser 12-bolt rear end with Hotchkiss suspension components. Now we're going to help that Cutlass cut a few corners with some more Hotchkiss components. Then we're going to help haul it down with this Master Power front disc setup. And when we're done, well, this thing ought to stop on a dime and maybe even give us a little change back. start the reassembly process now, but we're going to use the stock control arms. We've gone ahead and upgraded these, though, with these urethane bushings from Energy Suspension. Now, these things won't mush out like those stock rubber pieces, and they're going to help keep suspension deflection to a minimum. Oh, and here's something else. You always want to replace the ball joints, too, while everything's apart. Make sure you put some grease on the outside of the bushings before installing the lower control arms in the frame. Then install the upper control arms. And finally, high rate springs from Hotchkiss. We're tying the upper and lower control arms together with this new disc brake spindle from Master Power. And once we get it cinched down, we can reattach the steering arm and add a new dust shield. Now we can install the Edelbrock shocks. Then the caliper brackets get bolted up. And after packing the wheel bearings, the rotors go on, followed by the calipers, pads, and more new brake hoses. Well, now we can install this monster inch and 3 8 sway bar. Obviously, we got pretty carried away replacing parts under here, but once you get started, it's kind of hard to stop. And after countless hours of work, we've just about totally redone the undercarriage of Ernie's Cutlass. 
This pile of old parts we snatched off the car is pretty good proof of that. The Cutlass came from the factory with a set of 14-inch rims, but they just won't work with our big four-wheel disc setup. So what we did was ordered a set of these 17-inch Krager SS wheels. Now they're going to give us the clearance that we need around those big calipers and rotors. Plus, there are classes that allow us to send cruise on using a 545 up front and a 2540 back. You know something? This has been one long, hard week, but I feel it ought to be all worth it. Go ahead and fire the up, Mike. Love that sound. And just to refresh your memory, here's how the car sounded when we first brought it into the shop. Back when a measly 150 heavy muscle car here with a turbo 400 that draws a lot of power. All yours. It's not a racer, it's a serious pavement pounder with a lot of power potential. It now makes a pretty stout 320 horsepower at the rear wheels. Ernie's gonna love this thing. <laughs> no doubt. We'll bring the Cutlass back in a couple of weeks to pump up the appearance inside and out, but I'm not talking about some wild, weird, radical body and paint makeover. After all, we gotta keep this thing a classic American muscle machine. I mean, horsepower is what it's all about, right? Stay with us, we'll be back. Hey, thanks for joining us, and don't pay any attention to that thing right now. We'll tell you what it's about later. Meanwhile, it's payoff time for our Real Ride Challenge project. Now, today, we're going to pump up the appearance of the 69 O's Cutlass, add some other goodies, and we'll eventually turn the keys back over to the proud owners. Now, this project has been quite a challenge for us, too, and here's a flashback of what's gone down so far. We picked Ernest and Amy Smith's car from thousands of email pictures. A decent looking O's with indecently weak horsepower. We went to Recon and got it a 455 big block to replace the tired 350 and beefed it up with Edelbrock heads, intake, and carb. Then we made it into a Turbo 400 for BTE, installed a Moser 12 bolt rear end to plant the power, added hooker headers and a Flowmaster 3 inch exhaust, then Hotchkiss and Edelbrock suspension components to help the handling. We installed disc brakes all the way around from Master Power and finished up phase one with 17-inch Krager wheels on Cooper Xeon rubber. On our dyno jet, the O's made 320 horsepower at the rear wheels, a big jump over its 159 baseline. Meanwhile, this car was a definite 20-footer. And up close, you can see pitted chrome, cracked lenses, rotted weather stripping, ratty carpet, you know, the things you'd expect from a car 35 years old. But since the paint was in pretty good shape, we just had it clay, buffed, and waxed. It's amazing what a little bit of elbow grease and time did to this car. You got that right. Of course, our main goal here is horsepower and performance, not some gaudy, radical cosmetic makeover. However, 